hello everyone welcome back to the channel in this day video we are going to do SharePoint integration with Annette Ain. the purpose of creating this video is by default there are ways wherein Annette Ain has provided us to way to interact with SharePoint but when you are creating it for the first time you are going to face some errors which we are going to see and I'm also going to show you how we can basically overcome or fix that error to basically make in connectors or credentials through which we would be able to integrate it with SharePoint. So let's see what kind of error we are getting. So if you see here, this is a very plain project which I have. I have just created the first workflow. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come and say I wanted to integrate it with SharePoint. So when you click on SharePoint, for the purpose of keeping it very simple, what I'm going to do is I can use any action which I wanted to use. So let me use get item. Now, when you open this, it is going to tell you to create new credentials. And then based on that credentials, it is going to ask you. So let's create new credentials. When you click on create new credentials, it is going to ask you subdomain. In my case, it is binary roots. Okay, just put the tenant name, nothing else. This is by using Microsoft SharePoint Auth2 API, right? And this is where we are going to see some error. So when you click on this and click on connect my account, you see it doesn't this. It says insufficient parameter for Auth2.2. And then the error you see, it says that there is an app registration which is required, which is not listed in the requested permission in the application permission. It means that this app registration basically kind of does not exist in our intra ID on the domain on which we are going to use this connection. So this is what we are going to fix now. The error means here is that the app registration itself is missing or it doesn't have required permissions. So what we will do is first we will kind of see that whether the app registration is there or it is missing or what so if i come here and uh, if i go to app registration and if i search for this app id you don't see it let's search in all application if you see it doesn't happen and if you also go and check in the enterprise application there also you are not going to find this id so this is what we will try to solve now while trying different things i found a trick in which we would be able to make this work so what we will do is we will go to entertain again we will close this and uh, we will close this also and what i will do is uh, let us say we will delete this for now and let us say we wanted to make an http request okay now when you use the http request node which is to call in uh, this thing uh, which to call in any api which you have you will have different different authentication methods which are available in here we do have some predefined credential time the one which we see with sharepoint is also one of them and then there is a generic credential type we are going to use predefined credential type because net end also supports another type of authentication with microsoft 365 which is basically intra id authentication so if you click on it if you and search here for Microsoft, you are going to get so many uh, Microsoft based uh, authentication and everything, right? What we will do is in this case, we will use this Microsoft Intra ID Azure Active Directory API. Okay. And then we are going to say new credentials. And this is where this kind of pop up would come upon. In this case, I can say connect my account. So when you connect your account, in this case, what would happen is it is going to try to create or register the app registration with the same ID with some permission being requested. And I'm going to accept this for now. And what this will do is indirectly, as soon as we created the consent, the connection was successful, right? Now, I don't want to use this. I just wanted to do this just to create the connection or creating the app registration into my tenant. So I'm going to delete this now. Yes, I don't want this. And then what I will do is I'm going to also delete 
this HTTP request action because I don't want to use that also. If you want to make an HTTP request call with this, then yes, you can use it. Probably we will see that in some other video. But now what I will do is I will go back again here, click on SharePoint and let's say get an item. And in this case, I am going to now edit the credentials or probably delete the credentials because this is not uh, correctly created. So I'll say create new credentials. And now I will go and do the same thing. I'll put my domain name and I will say connect. And now if you will see here, the error should be gone. The connection is successful and the error is gone. It means now we are able to use the default SharePoint credentials which is available or connection which is available. And I can close this now. And now from here onwards, what you need to do is we are saying get an item. So we need to choose the site. So it is going to go and list down all the site on which I have access. Let me just use a test site called as playground. Yeah, I have it site. Then I'm going to go and click on get list. I'm going to just use any list. And then because this is a get item, it also needs to pass an ID. So I'm going to just say I ID. I'm just using any ID which is available because we are just testing whether the connection is successful or not, right? From here, what you can do is you can say execute this step. And what it will do is if it is successful, it is going to give me the data. In this case, if you see the output has been successful, we got the created date time and the required field which is there. So here, as you see, what we did is by using the default credential type which was available from NET N there was an issue with the app registration through which we were not able to basically make the connection we found an alternate way wherein we use microsoft intra azure active directory as in credentials to which we wanted to connect that indirectly registered the app registration with the same id which is available so for example if you want to see now and search for the same id here in the enterprise application and i'm going to put it here you see the ID is available now. Hence, what it did is the first step which we took based on that, it is it created that app registration and then that app registration can now be used to create the credentials, okay? Just in uh, thought, uh, after thought around that, so if you see here on the SharePoint, we have only very limited actions which are available. There are some file actions, there are some item actions, there are some list actions. So if you wanted to do anything beyond this, what you would have to do is you would have to use definitely the HTTP request which is available and make an HTTP request to SharePoint REST API to basically get the uh, data or update the data or whatnot, right? Hope you found this video helpful and you found these tips and tricks which will be able to with which you would be able to solve the issue which I was facing personally. Thank you for watching. See you next time.